Hello, my name is Dr. Marcy Littlefield, and today we are going to talk about society and social structure. Social structure is a really important aspect of sociology because it really helps you to understand how society is organized. And once you understand how society is organized, you can understand all the other aspects of society that help shape who you are, shape what you are able to do in society, and shape how you see the world. This is a picture of society. Society is made up of people. People completely make up what society looks like. It's important to really, really understand um, society and social structure because the way we look at the whole world is completely based on the way in which our society is organized. And social structure is how we understand that society. And Social structure and the organization of that society is what completely defines what access to power you have, how much money you have. Uh, it defines what your educational structure looks like. Um, social, uh, social structure is the basic organization of society and it's the most important pattern of social arrangement. As you can see on this on this picture at the very top, this is a picture that really represents the United States and the U.S. government. Capitalism is at the very top with a money bag. And you see as um, those who have more money at the very top of this pyramid at the very bottom are those who are uh, visibly poor and don't have the same resources as, as those at the top. And that's because of how society is organized and how it's arranged. And that is very much so a part of social structure. There are two ways to think about social structure um, as it relates to how sociologists think of the world, the functionalist perspective and the conflict perspective. And both of those perspectives are ma macro perspectives, which define how society is organized. And that's what we're talking about today when we think about social structure and what that looks like. Social structure accounts for the norms, the rules, the social roles, the hierarchies, and the institutions that shape how we feel as individuals. It shapes what we're able to do. It shapes how we feel. It shapes how we think. It shapes how we act. And it shapes the opportunities that are available to us as a result of where we are on that social structure. If you're at the bottom, there are only so many things available to you compared to those who are at the top. That's social structure and that's what it means. Social structure is fixed, it's enduring, meaning that every society has a form of social structure, although it varies in terms of what that social structure looks like. This is a picture of what American social class and capitalism looks like, but social structure varies by country in terms of who has rights and who doesn't, But it, and it is fixed and it's enduring, but it can be changed and it can be changed through social change and we'll talk more about that. Social structure includes social institutions. Social institutions are the important building blocks of how that society is organized, how that society carries out its most basic functions. Social institutions include the government, the law, religion, education, family, the economy, politics, and the mass media. And these institutions all together create, reproduce, and enforce societal norms and they reinforce the social order. Its uh, social structure really represents what makes society possible. Those social arrangements and how those organizations work together to form that society. And as individuals, we live in that society, but social structure is very much so going on and a part of that society um, because it's how it's organized. Social institutions, again, are um, important because they affect all of us, as you can see on this picture. The effect that it has on all of us is that it shapes how we see each other, it, it shapes our roles, it shapes how we start off in this world, it shapes how we progress through this world. Social institutions are really an important part of what society looks like. And again, this is another shot of the, those social institutions. And part of what this uh, slide is meant to think about it to get you to think about is the fact that the way we see the world we are not different than um, the society in which we live in we are completely a part of, of the society we you know although we may have our own visions our own beliefs how we see the world 
we are not separated from our own personal biographies. Our personal biographies are completely connected to the social structure in which we live in. Our families, how much education we have, what kind of government we live in, what the economy looks like, all of that affects us. And really, really has an impact on our lives. Social structure um, is important because when you think about social structure, and you understand social structure, you can understand how it really impacts you. How does social structure impact you? Well, it affects your agency. What is agency? Agency is your ability to actually make changes. It's your ability to exercise free will. It's your ability to really act independently and to make your own choices. It's your, really, it's your ability to be you. But your ability to be you is completely defined and completely part of the social structure in which you live in. And that's the important thing to think about. You are, are an individual, but you're an individual who operates in a society. And in that society is um, social structure. That is the way in which that society is organized. And unfortunately, your race, your class, your gender, your sexuality, how old you are, if you have disabilities, all of that can have an effect on your agency especially in reference to how that society is organized. Now, is it possible to exercise agency even though you may be constrained by some of those factors? Uh, yes, it is possible to exercise agency. However, agency uh, is completely impacted by the society in which you live in. What are some examples of agency? Well, we have the civil rights movement, uh, the gay rights movement, the Black Lives Matter movement, the Me Too movement, uh, school segregation was also an important uh, way to think about how do you actually change rules that uh, may be unfair to certain groups of people. But that, again, that's social structure. And the reason why we need change is because sometimes social structure uh, doesn't benefit certain groups. And that's why protests and that's why agency is necessary because sometimes you are constrained by what society looks like and how that society is, is socially organized. This is a picture of the Me Too movement where women are protesting the way in which they've been treated historically in society. The Me Too movement has gotten a lot of... Uh, you know, they, they've uh, come into the forefront. A lot of women have come forward and, and talked about the ways in which they have been violated. The women's movement is now really, really uh, has taken off as a result of the, the, the Me Too movement. And it, and it really, really tells women that you are not powerless. And because of that, we see a number of people who have been punished and gone to jail as a result of the, the, the way in which they violated women's rights. Uh, one famous, uh, there are a lot of famous cases. Uh, one in particular that I'm thinking about is, is the R. Kelly case, which uh, he has violated women and violated black women in particular for decades, and he is finally in prison. But the Me Too movement has, has really garnered a whole lot of support, not unlike some of the other movements that are also mentioned, like the Black Lives Matter movement, but the Me Too movement has really, really played a part in, in changing some of the ways in which certain groups of people, again, face social inequality in this society. So how do we think, of, again, how do we think about the dynamics of social structure? Well, we think about them in reference to our culture, um, how much power is in that society, and um, social structure. As you can see from this chart, social structure are recurring patterns of behavior and social life. That is the organizations, the way that society is organized, how much power uh, are in those organizations, and culture. Culture is a collection of values, beliefs, and knowledge, norms, language, behavior, all the ways in which society is organized. All of that is also part of social structure, and it completely affects you. So when we think about how you are affected, you are part of a society, you live in a society, but social structure completely defines that society in which you live in. So as you can see how the circle connects, social structure influences how people act and we are part of society. It influences us. Thereby, and when we act, we create and we produce or we can change social structure and it's all very much so connected. Thank you.